Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I seek leave to move the following motion. Yeah. This parliament applauds the sacrifices made by the Australian people to keep each other safe. The parliament thanks the heroes of the pandemic, our scientists, doctors, nurses, aged care and disability workers, cleaners and other essential workers. This House condemns the comments of the member for Dawson prior to question time designed to use our national parliament to spread misinformation and undermine the actions of Australians to defeat COVID. The House rejects statements that masks don't work, lockdowns don't work, and the describing of our health professionals as, quote, dictatorial medical bureaucrats. The House calls on all members to refrain from making ill-informed comments at a time when the pandemic represents a serious threat to the health of Australians. Just prior to question time, in the key position, the last speaker for the government, one which to uh, expose for the Australian public uh, tactics on both sides of the House, that's the key slot prior to 2pm that occurs in the parliament. The government chose to give that spot to the member for Dawson, to the member for Dawson, which is why I move the motion uh, that is uh, before me uh, that I've read out uh, before. The fact is that the member for Dawson has engaged in behaviour over uh, hydroxychloroquine, over uh, unproven and indeed dangerous remedies, which are completely, completely contradictory to the scientific advice and the, health, and the advice of our health professionals. There's been some debate, Mr Speaker, in this parliament about the two jobs that we say, and indeed the Prime Minister said when he addressed the National Press Club in January of this year, had as the priority for the government. The rollout of the vaccine and quarantine facilities that are purpose built and keep people safe. And the fact is, the fact is that when it comes to the rollout of the vaccine, our scientists have done an absolutely magnificent job. There's a debate over the speed in which our rollout has, has, has been. Because when it looks at the rollout, the fact is we are last in the developed world. And we're struggling to get in the top 80 in the, de in the entire world for the rollout of the vaccine. But last year, when companies like Moderna and Pfizer were promoting the idea of an mRNA vaccine, there was some scepticism as to whether it could be achieved and what the time frame would be. But as we asked in questions today about Moderna, in between the outbreak of COVID-19 originating in China and the end of the year, the end of 2020, Moderna had already delivered 100 million vaccinations to the US government. Pfizer was being delivered. Our scientists and our health professionals performed miracles to take what was an unknown, an unknown disease beginning in China and then spreading around the world and coming up with real solutions based upon science. And what parliaments have done around the world and the Australian people have been magnificent on is responding to the threat that this pandemic represented. Yeah. Australians have listened to the advice of our health professionals. They have made sacrifices. They've stayed at home. They've kept safe from each other. They have, in many cases, made sacrifices that have cost their jobs, that have cost their incomes, and certainly every Australian's way of life has been impacted as a result as a result of this. 
But what we have had throughout this pandemic is also a very small minority of people. A small minority of people here in Australia, but also overseas, and we saw the actions certainly in the United States leading up to some of the conspiracy <coughs> theorists leading to a raid on the White House in January earlier this year. But here we have had, through Facebook, through a range of social media posts, the promotion of, frankly, ideas not based upon science, based upon conspiracies, based upon spreading fear, based upon spreading misinformation. And we saw the end result of those consequences in those rallies that took place just weeks ago. The violent rally in Sydney, which should have been condemned, and anyone promoting it should have been condemned, just like the minister was quite right to condemn any violence and inappropriate way of protesting that occurred outside this parliament and at the Prime Minister's residence earlier today. But what we saw down to the punching of a horse, down to the attacks on police, the attacks on those brave men and women who take the duty of keeping us safe was people having those mass demonstrations in order to promote civil disobedience. And you would think that for many people they might have been on the fringe of society. They'd heard misinformation. They were concerned about the sacrifices that they were being asked to make and didn't have a clear explanation as to why. And for many people who turned up just frustrated, you can. You can perhaps think maybe they were just misguided. But for a member of the House of Representatives, as the member for Dawson did, to attend a rally in Mackay, supporting, supporting these violent demonstrations that took place, is an insult to those heroes of the pandemic. And that's why this motion recognises our scientists, our doctors, our nurses, our aged care and disability workers, our cleaners, our truck drivers, our supermarket workers, who've made all of those sacrifices to keep us safe. And yet what we have is a member of the government, a member of the Liberal National Party coming into this parliament and in the key slot before question time, promoting these conspiracy theories, oh, saying that it's OK to say, as he did in his, in his contribution, to say masks don't work, fact, to say lockdowns don't destroy the virus, but they do destroy people's livelihoods and people's lives, nice. to say to refer to our medical heroes, not as being heroes of the pandemic, but as dictatorial medical bureaucrats need to recognise these facts and stop spreading fear. And then to go on to say this, at a time when in the last days, each and every day, there have been fatalities in New South Wales, including over the weekend, one of my constituents, a constituent in an aged care home in Summerhill who caught the virus because an aged care worker had not been fully vaccinated, because they had not been kept safe. That's right. And what we have from this member of parliament, some people will catch it. Tragically, some people will die from it. That's inevitable and we have to accept it. That's what he said. That's what he said. He then went on to say, open society back up, restore our freedoms, end this madness. Well, I'll tell you what madness is. Madness is saying, let this disease rip. Let people die. Let whole economies be shut down. Let's stop us being able to return to our way of life. That is what is madness. The madness of conspiracy theorists. The madness of 
the rump in the National Party who replaced the former Deputy Prime Minister as its leader as a result of being prepared, being prepared, this, this, this towel wagging the National Party dog because the former Deputy Prime Minister wouldn't have a bar of this sort of nonsense, but the current one is hot, quite happy to give it a tick. And the Liberal and National parties are quite happy to give a voice to the member for Dawson. He's not sitting on the crossbench. I'll tell you why, what, when we'll take you seriously in terms of the government. We'll take the government seriously when the member for Dawson is expelled from the party and is sitting over there with the member for Hughes. Because the member for Hughes has also sprouted these sort of conspiracy theories and when it's allowed to do it day after day, week after week, month after month, at a time when our heroes, our heroes of the pandemic are doing, are doing great work each and every day being undermined by someone paid for by the taxpayer with the great honour, with the great honour of sitting in this House of Representatives. But with that great honour of sitting in the House of Representatives comes obligation. An obligation to be fair income. An obligation, an obligation to promote truth. An obligation not to promote conspiracy theories, an obligation to listen to the health professionals. And the health professionals have had a difficult task. It is true, it is true that this was not anticipated. Anyone early in 2019 who would have said at the time of the contest of the last election that this would be a dominant issue during this term of parliament, not even Nostradamus could have done that. But the fact is that Australians, Australians in workplaces, some of the poorest paid Australians, our cleaners, those people who look after people in aged care homes, risking their lives, going in, going in, helping vulnerable Australians each and every day being prepared to do that. Aged care workers who were told they would be fully vaccinated by Easter, right. but who were then told, no, nah, just go and see a doctor, you're on your own when it comes to being vaccinated. They are our heroes and they deserve so much better. Our people in disability care, who have, we learnt yesterday, under 40%, under 40% vaccinated, pretty close to one in three and under half of our aged care workers. They are our heroes. They deserve our thanks and our gratitude. But what they get, what they get is an insult from the member for Dawson. But what's worse is those people who are members of grieving families today to actually hear in our national parliament yeah. a member of parliament stand up and essentially say, as he, as he did explicitly, not essentially, COVID-19 is going to be with us forever just like the flu. This is not the same as the flu. No, that's right. This is not the same as the flu. This is something that has had The member for Dawson said, and just like the flu, we will have to live with it, not the constant fear of it. Well, I've got to say this. I'm scared and Australians are scared of COVID. There is fear because they're fearful of something that's scary. This is having an impact. People are dying. People are dying. People are getting sick. There are almost... 30 people in hospital today who are on ventilators, on ventilators, being kept alive by the machine. There are more than, almost double that, or, or around about double that, who are in hospital, in ICU. 
This is a scary disease. It requires an appropriate response. This parliament needs to dissociate itself from the member for Dawson's comments. Here, here. It was let go for far too long <coughs> with, the, with the mad theories about what drugs people should do. You know, we didn't quite have uh, you know, the, what we had in the United States of you know, drinking bleach and various things, but we've had quite inappropriate theories promoted by the member for Dawson, and that's why uh, this should be supported. And that's why uh, the member for MacArthur uh, has seconded this motion. Not yet, he hasn't. As, as a doctor, he will be. <laughs> As a doctor, it's called anticipating as someone who is a strong advocate uh, for people's health and someone who has played such a constructive role during this pandemic. Yeah. Yeah.